uh, crystals, 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 crystals. There's a brand new page for you guys. Anyone who is a member of my Facebook group, Tom, link in the description. Uh, the page is a free gift in an album with a super friendly name that I can never remember, like stress-free coloring or something. It's really obvious and all the new pages always have the comments on them. So they're on top of the thread. You'll see it right away. This is the page. It is very similar to uh, the other crystals page that I did way back in the day when I was a total YouTube pup and had no idea how to make professional videos. Uh, I made this tutorial on coloring crystals. It was 10 minutes long. It's, it's a cute tutorial. I watched it the other day and, and it's cute, but my editing skills were not so stellar back then. It's a little bit embarrassing watching it now. Um, although all the techniques are valid and correct. So if, if you do want to see um, how I did these crystals, uh, the link to that show is in the video description. But I think most of you already saw it. It has an obnoxious amount of views on it. And a lot of you are already coloring this page. Oh, no. Not enough people saw it. Oh, uh, I mean, not enough people, not enough people saw, saw it. it. <laughs> more people, more should, go people and should go that and video. watch that. It's actually a very cool video. <laughs> so we will apply uh, similar strategies to these crystals right here. This is a new cluster that I drew for you. And I also brought out this page, which is something that I did with my Featherwolf patrons also several months ago. Th these are gemstones, which are different. You approach gemstones a little bit differently. Um, however, there are a lot of similarity in the glow effect. So I thought this would be an interesting reference as well. So to start, I will start with white charcoal. I'm working on gray paper and I'm starting with my favorite tool to establish the highlights. With crystals, the light direction is a little bit less important than it is with our skin tone coloring and other character coloring, because uh, especially with a crystal cluster where the crystal shards are pointing in all different directions and the light is actually reflecting not only inside each of the shard, but they're all reflecting off of each other. So it's complete and total madness and it's kind of a free for all. So in a way it seems uh, overwhelming, but it's also liberating because there is no one correct way. Looking at this, you can't possibly tell that this face has to be white, but not that. So you really kind of just have the freedom to place your highlights wherever you want. However, you do want to space them out. So if you have one face that's colored white, the one next to it can't be the same color. That's the only rule. All right, so about the white, as you can see, I've been applying it kind of randomly, but also systematically. There is madness to this logic. There's, there's madness <laughs> to my method. There's madness to my logic. <laughs> there's logic to my madness. Um, you can see that they are, it's like when you look at the night sky and you see that the stars are all spread out kind of randomly, but they're like reliably random. You don't really see 16 stars in one cluster really tightly packed against each other or like 60 stars in this one part of the sky and then like two over here. It's like nicely, generously spread out over the sky. Like somebody spilled a whole bunch of stars. It's the same thing here with these glow effects. You have to kind of gauge on your own where it makes sense. And like I said, the, the way that you create the reflective illusion is for instance, if we take this face right here and I started with the white glow, the faces next to it won't have it. That shows you that it's three dimensional and it's the, the flat faces catch the light and the other ones will reveal the actual true color of the crystal. I think the most fascinating thing about crystals is that people are naturally drawn to them. You can say that certain things are, are fashionable or popular and, and become trendy, but crystals have been a fascination for human beings for literally centuries. And everyone is fascinated by crystals, regardless of their background or, or their taste or, or their preference or anything like that. Just people genuinely like them. I'm going to switch to dark purple in Prismacolor. I would highly recommend that if you have a chance, always draw a color from life. If you have crystals at home, set them up at your desk as you're making this coloring and see how the light plays on them in reality. I have only my imagination and Google images to go on because there are no crystals in this house. But if you, if you have them, as some of you I see from the chat do, uh, do set them up. 
here I am switching to a light blue. I have several light blue colors or like a middle blue color. I, I selected a bunch of these from the Prismacolor set that are, you can see they're almost identical. Um, the Prismacolor set, the 150 pencil set is kind of extraordinary in its, in its gradient of colors that you can get shades of a certain colors that are very close to each other. And these are almost identical, but the one that I chose is this uh, light cerulean blue. Uh, so any, any kind of a middle blue color will work well here over my dark purple. I like using bright blue, a middle blue, like a baby blue over a deep purple to enhance it a little bit. And also I want this crystal to be not just straight up amethyst, but a little bit, a little bit more uh, of an electric blue in there as well. My strategy here with the colors is the same as it was with the white charcoal yesterday. I'm adding the colors to the faces that are next to each other so that I have contrast. So if, if I have white here, I'm adding dark purple next to it. And I'm trying to create gradients on each face. So while the smaller, the smaller little windows are so small that they can be a solid color because they're, they, they just reflect the light, the longer pieces, the, the bigger faces, they, they reflect more information. So they get these beautiful gradients that go from darker color to no color. And there's no correct way to do this. You know, if you have a reference image, work from a reference image. If, uh, if you don't just, you know, talk to your drawing the way that you would talk to a crystal, ask it what it, it wants to be. Like, I feel like that's how I interact with my art as well. I just, I don't always have a plan for what I'm doing. I ask my project what it wants to be and, and that's what I create. So I encourage you to try that. Don't sweat the outcome. It's not about making it perfect. It's about the process and relaxing and using coloring as stress relief. Remember that I wanted to do um, a gradient transition to green crystals on this side. So we will actually be working with green today. And for my greens, I have selected peacock green. Awesome. French green that mysteriously appeared in my inventory and also a light green, uh, jade green will also work. These are all Prisma colors. And another color that I have on the side that I may or may not use is this light aqua, just because it looks like a fun color. We will, we will start with the green here. And again, we are working in layers. So don't worry about going over the previous colors that you've established. I am a big fan of layering pretty much everything, like anything that I'm coloring or drawing, all the effects that I create are probably influenced by my painting days, which is why I'm a, I'm a huge fan of just layering color on top of color. And also it allows me uh, the time to process what is being created so that I can adjust it in real time. If something's not going the direction that I wanted it to go, I can make the, the appropriate changes so that I take it in a new direction. And with these crystals, my strategy is um, I'm taking the faces that are, that are next to each other. And if I have a really light one, I'm going to put a really brightly colored one next to it and so on and so forth. So that each face that's nearly white or completely white is surrounded by brightly colored ones. And that way we create the, the three dimensional illusion. Remember if you're working on white paper here on gray toned paper, I started with white charcoal and I established all of my light glare already. But if you're working on white paper, just make sure to leave these spaces completely blank because you want pure white on your crystals at the end. That's what's going to make them glow. However, if you are working on white paper, I highly, highly recommend that you color the background completely. It doesn't matter what color, um, light gray, anything, anything at all, as long as it's not white. The only pure white on your page should be in these parts of the crystals. Otherwise, it's not going to have that glistening, shimmery, crystal-like effect. My general strategy is I start with a darker color on my gradients, like here in this part, I started with my dark purple and I've created a gradient uh, just by applying less pressure and going over this area uh, less and going over this area more, making it darker and darker and darker. And when I had, when I have this layer of purple, I switch to something like my blue and then I use the pencil itself as a blender. And you can see that when I apply the blue over the purple in this gradient area, 
it also it enhances the dark purple underneath it making it more vibrant and it kind of naturally creates this gradient and then I just trail it off by applying less pressure and then if that is still not enough I'll take my white and I'll blend this tail end of it as well. So for gradients, I do like to start with dark, like here I'm applying my dark green, lots of it, very, very generously, green, 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 green. And there are different, there are a million shading techniques. You can, you can make little strokes like this going from the base out, um, as long as you can keep your lines more or less parallel in the same direction, you can go like that you can go this way and just apply less and less and less and less pressure until there's hardly any. You can start from the lighter area and apply more pressure as you're going to the base. And here's where layering comes in. Again, it's not about applying a ridiculous amount of pressure here to get the green, like you don't wanna be grinding into the paper. You just go over it and over it and over it, over it and the color will build up on its own. And then once I have that, I will take my lighter color, so in this case it's light aqua, and I will go right over that dark green. Again, you can see that it becomes more vibrant, and I apply the same kind of a gradient technique. You can do the, the strokes from the base out, like this, or you can go across. I like to go with the direction of my object. The face of this crystal um, has two planes that we can work with. We can go vertical, parallel with the vertical lines, or we can go across, like I imagine that it's three-dimensional, so it's actually like in this plane going away from us. So that's a nice angle to follow. Uh, that's another way to do shading. And then you use that as a blender. But I don't actually use Q-tips to blend my colors, um, usually, unless I have like, really obvious uh, pencil strokes that I don't like. Or some pencils become more vibrant when you use a q-tip to blend them but it's a very specific example you don't actually need it um, you can do all of your blending with the pencils and then again i can add my white for the little for the little glare effects and there you go usually keeping it simpler is is a better way to go than um than trying to go really complicated and add a lot of colors like here there's not that much actual pigment it's just green and a transition color to white, which in this case is um, this light aqua color. But any one of these would work as well. Like in the Prisma color set, we have a whole spectrum of these light greens and blues, all of which would work absolutely beautifully. Again, there's no one perfect way to do um, the crystal effect correctly. It's all like every crystal is unique. Therefore, every crystal coloring is going to be unique. And they're even unique as you turn them. They're so random that you can't possibly make a mistake here. I, I feel like the biggest struggle with crystals for people and, and for me as well, is that we overthink it. We're so used to working with objects that are predictable, that are the same no matter how you look at them, like our faces don't change that dramatically. Like as I turn, the lighting on my face changes, but not so dramatically that I have these light spots on, on, on different parts of my face. Like it's still readable, it's still the same shape, but not with crystals. You turn a crystal and it's like a completely different animal all of a sudden. And that's a difficult concept to wrap your mind around. That's why working from life is a better idea. If you actually have a crystal, you know, set one up and, and look at it. But again, don't obsess over every single detail because there's just too much information to take in. What you want to do is to deliver an illusion of something that's shiny. And you do that through the use of contrast more than through the use of color. And that's, that's what we're doing. That's why we have the really dark colors right next to the pure white. And it's the highly, highly, highly saturated parts, like bright purple, bright blue, bright green, next to pure white. And that makes it look like it's actually um, glass-like or crystal-like. Okay, so I'm using this neon pink Prisma color pencil. And I noticed that on my purple areas, like I applied purple over the gray of the paper and I added a little bit of blue, but I left a lot of the areas kind of translucent so you can still see the paper color. 
and there's too much gray now it's a little bit washed out they don't the crystals are on their way to looking realistic but they're not quite there they they look transparent in a way that's not very oh my god there's no fly here are you sure i am sure how would you know I am... oh there he is he's right there oh. <laughs> I made I made a nice start here, but it's not it's not enough. I feel like the areas that are colorful should be more colorful. They should be saturated so that we can see that the crystal is indeed very bright and not just a translucent crystal. Not that there's anything wrong with translucent crystals, but if I intended for it to be transparent or translucent, oh my god! <laughs> if there's one thing that we all have in common when it comes to coloring something like this, it's just this feeling of being overwhelmed with how much information there is here. It really comes down to making it personal, making your own choices, and making them more intuitively. You know, when we spoke about crystals, we spoke about actually uh, talking to them, and people people have the ability to hold a crystal in their hand and like ask it questions or tell it which way do you want to be arranged on the shelf. I feel the same way about drawing, about art. Um, you know, ask your page what it wants to be you know just just listen to the universe and and listen to what it wants to be because it's not it's not about creating something perfect it's about enjoying the journey of it and you will probably have to color several of these pages like you can't expect for this to be your first time coloring crystals and it's going to come out looking 100 percent like crystals that's that's not the idea the idea is to just enjoy the process and see what happens you have to make mistakes in order to learn if you're not trying different effects to see which work and which don't and and actually looking at the ones that don't without being upset with yourself that's that's the journey that you should be on just play with it play with different colors play with different effects and cool things will happen like things will happen to you that i can't possibly imagine because your hand is different your paper is different your lighting is different your mood is different um, you know you are an individual that is completely different from me so your experience will be different and so will your result you try it again you try it again and things will happen to you that you will make a mental note of and then try that thing again here i used two new colors today on the purple side i added neon pink and on the green side, I added light green to make um, both both like middle to light tones, but very, very vibrant. And I used them in all the areas that I had left gray previously. I'm adding a little bit more color because for the sparkle effect, we need contrast. So I've added more pink more purple and more peacock green so remember for our colors we used two shades of purple dark and light two shades of green dark and light a little bit of light blue and a little bit of light green for our transitions and i tried to cover all of the gray areas with either green or pink or light blue so that we have very little of the background gray and mostly just highly saturated colors on these crystals so i am working with my posca pen uh, lots of you know this brand and this pen, and actually you guys introduced me to it. <laughs> so, so what I do is I make a mark, like a little circle, and then I make a vertical line and a, a vertical line up and a vertical line down, and I take my Q-tip and I and I smudge it in that direction, and I do the same thing horizontally to the right and to the left. You can do the same thing with a white pencil. You won't need to. Um, you won't need to smudge it. You can just. You can just draw it on. You can do the same thing with white acrylic paint. But I really like this because it's so fast. The only thing you have to remember is when you're doing this kind of a, um, of a glitter effect. That's a that's a four pointed star. Um, don't change your angles. So if this is the direction of the rays that I've picked, I have two, I have like one main vertical smear and one horizontal. I need to stay consistent with that throughout the whole thing because it's not, they're not objects, they are optical illusions. So if the light is reflected in a certain way that your eyes are perceiving it as horizontal and vertical smudges of glitter, of glow, then that will be 
the same all over in the scene. So don't go rotating your angles all over the place. That will kill the illusion. So since I already started it this way, all of my little glitter effects will be in that direction. And the other important thing is to not put too many of them. I think that will, that will also make it look a little bit fake. So I will only add it, I will add a bunch of them in this bottom part of the crystal cluster that has lots of um, little broken shards. And I will add just a couple of them on the, on the crystals themselves. And that's it. I won't go too crazy with them. Um, and I will also add just plain old dots here and there, like little stars. Um, I think only the bottom part that's all like shardy and broken up will be sparkly like this and the rest of it like I only added one here and and that's it <laughs> and that's it I think these faces that are that are pure white are a stronger effect than adding a lot of glitter to this but I do want to enhance the the white of the flat faces that are reflecting the white so I will switch to my other white gel pen this is a, a paint marker this is a 0.7 millimeter fine point, but I think other sizes will work just as well. The difference between these two for me is that I tend to go with the Posca pen for the tiny details like the, the glitter stuff because the Posca pen dries almost immediately. Like it's done and dry within like 10 seconds. So as soon as I've done the smear thing, that's it. Like I can run my hand over the page and nothing happens. Whereas with this stuff, it actually takes quite a while to dry, especially if you apply a lot of it. So it, there are pros and cons, of course. Um, one thing is it gives you more time to, uh, to make adjustments. So if you add too much of this stuff, you can take it off. If you didn't add enough, um, you can keep adding more of it. You can take the time to smear it around with your Q-tip um, because you have plenty of time for this stuff to dry. But on the other hand, since it's taking forever to dry, you have to be very careful not to smudge your drawing. And also while it's drying, like, like you saw, I just applied a little bit of this here. I don't want to touch it again until it's completely dry because then it's gonna get all mushy and, and weird. Um, so you do have to be more patient with it and more precise. This guy is better for covering a surface or creating um, a very soft gradient uh, again, I can apply a lot of it and just gently smudge it here in a corner or even like tap it down so that um, it's a smooth, smooth layer. So, I mean, obviously nothing is ever done. I can keep working on this for another week and keep adding effects and adding color. And I could play with the background and do all the little designs on the back and stuff like that. Um, but it's not about making it perfect. It's about the process and relaxing and using coloring as stress relief.